Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're having a good day. We'll start the English lesson in about 42 seconds. As usual, I'm going to make sure everything is working properly before we start the lesson. My volume is really, really high on my mic, on my earbuds there. So, turn that down. Oh, and I got a notification on my phone. Oh, that says the lesson starting. <laughs> That's what the notification is. Anyways, it sounds like everything is working well. We'll start in about 15 seconds on this lesson about amazing new inventions. I think you will enjoy it. I think it will be a good lesson. Let me just double check a couple things. Three, two, one. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this lesson about amazing new inventions. Now, I'm using the word new but I'm not talking about just things that were invented in the last year. I'm actually going to be talking about new inventions from the last 10 or 20 years in this English lesson. Some of these things are really new for me but they may be things that you've known about for a few years already. So, I'm using the word new um quite liberally. So, you'll be seeing uh, a lot of things that maybe were invented 20 years ago or just this past year or five years ago. But in this English lesson, we're going to talk about amazing new inventions. Before we get started, I do want to say hi to all of the people in the chat. Uh, hello everyone. Welcome to this English lesson about amazing new ev- inventions. I will say hi to Apple the Frog, Pavlina, Clive, 7413, Hanitra, English consistency with Santosh, Manish, Clive, I think I said Nizu, Alexandre, uh, Key Park, Lolly Lolly, Vitor, let me scroll back a bit here. Kevin Hawthorne is here, Salar, Wanda Prado, uh, let me scroll back. Peter is here, John, Ulia, so many familiar names and some new names. So, it's good to have everyone here. Hafiez is here as well. Ario is here, very good to see all of you. Hello to Sam. Hello to Madi and Dan uh, and Filippo. It's good to be here on a Friday to learn a little bit of English. I hope you do enjoy the lesson. It was fun to think of things that uh, that have been around and are very common now but when I was a kid didn't exist. Uh, Life has certainly changed a lot in the last 40 or 50 years and we'll spend some time in this lesson looking at some of the more recent things. By the way, if you do have a question during the lesson, please use the link that is shared in the description below Uh, or I think members are able to do this. Let me see. What are members able to do? Uh, I forget. I actually forget the command right now but there is a command to make the question form. Oh, is it just link? Maybe that's what it is. I think members are able to do an exclamation mark and then the word link and then Nightbot will share the link. So, if people want to do that occasionally, that would be great. Anyways, are you ready? Should we get this lesson started? Okay, let's do that. I think I've done everything properly. Everything here is working right. Let me do an audio check one more time. Yeah, I think I think we're ready to go. I don't know why I think I'm forgetting something. I welcomed everyone. I introduced the lesson. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. Let's do that. GPS. So, this was the first thing I thought of when I was designing this lesson. The first thing I thought of was the global positioning system. Even when I drive somewhere uh and when I know how to get there, sometimes I still use GPS because It tells me how long it will take me and more importantly, it will tell me if there is a traffic jam or if there is a problem on the route that I normally take and it will tell me to go a different way. So, if I drive to Toronto, if I go to Toronto, that's how we say it by the way, Toronto to see a Blue Jays game, I still use GPS or the global positioning system. We just say GPS to get there because sometimes it will know that there's an accident on the highway I'm on 10 or 20 kilometers ahead and it will tell me a different route to go. So, GPS a very very cool thing. When I was a kid, we just had maps, paper maps. I remember my parents looking at a map and trying to figure out how to get somewhere and sometimes the map was old and it didn't have new roads on it. So, 
GPS has certainly improved our ability to travel easily. And then of course, this one. I think the r- first real smartphones showed up around 2006, 2007. We call them cell phones or mobile phones or smartphones. Mostly though, people just call it a phone now. We've been using these for so long that they are just what you call a phone. So, I know when I talk to my students, they have a phone. Sometimes they buy a new phone. We don't often say cell phone or mobile phone or smartphone anymore. Uh we just say phone uh because that's what it is. This might be one of the biggest inventions in the last 10 or 20 years is the smartphone. In fact, many of you right now are watching me on your phone. So, it has allowed us to do many things uh, including GPS by the way. Translation software. So, I don't know how I would go through my day without using something like Google Translate. Translation software has helped us to understand each other better. Right now, I use Google Translate quite a bit because I have been putting videos onto a website in China called Billy Billy. And in order to understand the interface, I need to use Google Translate. I need to use translation software to translate the page for me. Um so, I find this a very very useful tool. I'm sure a lot of you do as well. My other main use of Google Translate or translation software is when I don't know a word in French and if I'm having a conversation with my French speaking partner, I will quickly look a word up. I use it as a dictionary. Very handy translation software. And then of course, here is a more recent one, AI or artificial intelligence. So, recently, there are things like chat GPT and other platforms where computers have become so smart that they can act as if they are human. AI has come a long way just in the last two years. In fact, it's becoming a problem at school because students can use AI to do their homework for them. Artificial intelligence or AI has become so smart and so good at writing that students are now using it to do their work for them. Not a good thing. But AI would be one of the more recent cool inventions. So, this actually is new (laughs) of all the things I'm talking about. It's very, very new. And then of course, you have the 3D printer. So, these have been around for a while. Our school bought its first 3D printer about seven or eight years ago. A 3D printer allows you to print something in three dimension. Um if I wanted to print out something to hold my key, I could measure this and I could print something using a 3D printer and then use that to hold my key when I come home. Um they're pretty cool. For a long time, we just had normal printers that printed on paper but now you can print things in 3D. By the way, 3D stands for three dimensional. So, you have three dimensions when you look at something. We live in a three dimensional world. Um so, you have length and width and height. So, if you wanted to print a little statue of Bob the Canadian, you could do that on a 3D printer or a three-dimensional printer. We don't ever call them three-dimensional printers. We just call them 3D printers. Now, a few of my relatives have gotten laser eye surgery. So, normally, if you have trouble seeing, you wear glasses, right? Or you wear contact lenses. But if you want, you can go and have laser eye surgery and they will use a laser to correct the lens in your eye so that you can focus and see properly again. So, I would say this is a pretty cool new invention. It's probably been around for about 20 years. It's been around a lot longer than um chat GPT um but it has become more common in the last five years. More and more people I know have gotten laser eye surgery. Um I'm not sure I would ever get laser eye surgery though. I'm not I'm not sure. I don't I I don't need glasses except for reading but uh the idea of someone using a laser on my eye it's a little terrifying. And then there's robotic surgery. So, there's this interesting thing where um doctors or surgeons, a surgeon is a doctor who does surgery. They can use a robot when they're doing surgery so their movements are more precise. 
So, robotic surgery is often used for heart surgery. So, the doctor might use a robot to help them do the surgery because the robot moves in a much more precise and accurate way. Humans sometimes we um you know we our hands might shake a little bit or we might make a little mistake and so, the robot helps to do surgery in a way where um that doesn't happen as much. I don't know a lot about robotic surgery. I just know that uh, it is far more commonplace now especially for heart surgery. And then of course, the electric car or electric vehicle. We've started to call these EVs in English. Sorry, I should have put that on the slide. The letter E and the letter V. So, uh, the government is encouraging people to buy EVs, electric vehicles. A lot of people have electric cars. At my school, the parking lot is slowly starting to get more electric cars. I think there's three or four now. There's about 40 cars there uh, on any given day and usually two or three of them are either a Tesla or another type of electric vehicle or electric car. So, certainly, we are starting to move into a world where there are other options besides the gas engine. We now have electric cars or electric vehicles and we do sometimes say EV. And then, of course, some of them can drive themselves a little bit to varying degrees. That means that some are really good at autopilot on a highway and we have cars now um, that can drive themselves as well. So, if you have um, a Tesla with a really good uh, self-driving software package installed, it the car will drive itself in some situations. So, I don't know a lot about this. I think it would be really cool if I am driving on the highway to simply put the car in autopilot and let it drive itself. Uh, that would be cool. But cer- certainly, when I was a kid, the idea of a self-driving car seemed like science fiction. It seemed like something that would never ever happen. But we do now have self-driving cars in the world and they are pretty common. So, this is one that I kind of made up myself. This is a term by the way. Sorry, I didn't make this up but um the idea of having batteries that last all day, that was not the case when I was a kid. That was not how the first cell phones worked. Um there was a time when batteries weren't very good. Batteries went dead very very quickly 10 or 20 years ago and it wasn't until we started using lithium ion batteries that we started to see all day battery life or multi day battery life. So, when I say all day battery life, it means I can charge my phone and when I come home, my phone still has 50 or 60 percent of its battery left. That's really really cool. The very very first cell phone I had back in the late 90s early 2000s, Uh, I had to charge it halfway through the day. The battery didn't last all day. If I made too many phone calls, the battery went dead very, very quickly. Um also, my very first laptop, the battery only lasted about 40 minutes. Um but now my laptop, I can use it for two or three days. So, it has all day battery life or multi-day battery life. That is very, very cool. I I like that. That's very convenient and very awesome. Hey, I need a sip of water and we're gonna do some questions here. I do wanna say hi to the 277 people watching. If you're new here, don't forget to click this subscribe button or the one below somewhere. Uh, I'm going to answer a few questions here. Madi in the chat says rechargeable battery. I should have even put that on because there was a time when batteries, there weren't very many rechargeable batteries around. That was, that's a relatively new thing. Okay. Let's get to the questions. Thanks, Madi. That's a good suggestion. Hafiez says, I did laser eye surgery. Cool. So, a couple people in my family have done it and they love it. They they just said it's amazing. So, I don't know what it's like to go from wearing glasses or contacts all the time to having your vision corrected but it must be a nice feeling. Let's see from Renata. Good morning, Bob. What has been the most amazing invention for you so far? Which one would you keep and which one would you not mind being without? Have a great day. So, I would say the the same. I think for me, it's this. The phone is the most amazing event invention but sometimes I could live without it. 
sometimes I get so many messages in such a short period of time from work or from family or from whoever it starts to feel um like a bit too much. But I would say the phone, the smartphone is probably the coolest. Along with that, of course, would be the internet. It kind of goes hand in hand, right? Um having a phone connected to the world that I can use to teach English. Like I use my phone to make videos. I use my phone to watch videos. I use it to message people. I it's my GPS. It's a cool invention. I can't live without it but some days I wish I could. Yeah. Let's see here. Um so, Mr. Azoz says, hi, Bob. What's up? I've heard the phrase, if that don't beat all, what does it mean and is it correct because we should say doesn't instead of don't. It is correct. Um and it's something you say when like if someone shows you a new invention, you would say, wow, if that doesn't beat it all. Oh, maybe I do use doesn't. Let me check that. If that don't beat it all. I think don't is a little more slang but that came out doesn't beat it all. Let's see here. Well, if that doesn't beat it all. No, it is don't. Um basically, when you're surprised at some news. So, if you showed me a phone and said this battery lasts a whole month after you charge it, I would say, well, if that don't beat it all. Um but I I must say doesn't sometimes too. From Santosh, why do people go to modern cities? So, I think because of convenience. I think cities offer a a way of life where things are very very convenient. There's public transit. There's food delivery. Uh you don't need a car if you live in the city. You can walk to the grocery store. So, I think one of the reasons for hundreds of years that people have moved to the city um is convenience and there's just more to do. Like if you want to go out at night where I live, there isn't a lot to do. (laughs) You can go outside and look at the stars. That's really all you can do. Uh from Ario, hi, how are you? I just watching your live lesson on spread the word and spread out. Oh, yeah, that was a good lesson. My question is what kind of invention that would exist in the future? Time machine? I don't know if we'll ever invent a time machine. That would be kind of cool but also a little strange, right? Um I think the next big thing would be um so right now you're watching a video. I think the next thing would be doing things in virtual reality. So, where I would be you would be sitting in a virtual room with me and you would see me and I would see you. That I think would be the next cool thing in the future. Next one from Hung. Hi, Bob. I'm trying to earn knowledge to become a creative tech inventor. What kind of person do you think becomes an inventor? Must they be well educated in English? Thanks. No. I think you just have to have lots of ideas. I don't think you have to be well versed in English. I think it would be helpful but not required. So, I think it would allow you to um communicate more with people in the English speaking part of the world. Maybe to get your invention uh produced or something like that but I don't think it is required. Dimitri, hello, Mr. Bob. Great topic today. My question is, do you use chat GPT or other AI products for resolving your personal tasks? What about job tasks? Thanks for the answer. No. So, I tried using chat GPT to write the description that goes underneath my videos but I ended up changing so much of what it wrote that I decided it was just easier to write it myself. So, I tried that once or twice. I thought, oh, maybe this will be a quick way to write a description uh but I did not like it. So, I don't know. I I do like to write as well though. So, it's not necessarily the first thing I would use it for. Uh let's see here. From Andre, hello, Mr. Bob. How do you think artificial intelligence will affect the English learning process for non-native speakers? One of the hardest things to find is a conversation partner to help you practice English. Right now, chat GPT can do that role if if you want to type and read and write and I think you'll see a lot of chat bots start to appear that will help people practice their English. So, instead of going on Zoom and paying someone, a person to have a conversation with you at some point, it's probably already happening. You'll just talk to an AI avatar. It will look like a human and they it will help you have a conversation. Uh from Unsol, hi teacher Bob. What is the invention you are addicted to? 
or would have the hardest time without happy fall equinox by. Yes, it's fall, isn't it? Um my phone as I mentioned with Renata's question, definitely my phone. I think many of you would probably say the same thing. Uh I think that is probably the hardest thing that if I had to give up my phone, I that would be weird. When when the battery goes dead, that's when I realize how much I like my phone. Hack on. Hey, sir. Everything depends on a person's capability, free time, etc. But how many words do you think a language learner should learn a day? Min and max. You have to figure that out. You have to learn the number of words that will stay in your head and you won't forget. For me, that's about 10 words. I can learn 10 new words a day and that's about it. Some people can learn 50. Some people, it's hard to learn five. From Vitor. Have you tried a VR Oculus? Some people say they feel dizzy. Thanks, Bob. I have tried it once. I played Beat Saber and I did feel a little dizzy but I think I would get used to it. Yeah, I think it was just the first time kind of thing. Uh let's see here. From Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. What invention in your opinion we must have in the next decade? Have a nice weekend, sir. I think even though I haven't used it much, I think VR head a VR headset and virtual reality, the metaverse or whatever they end up calling it. Like in 10 years, I might be doing live lessons not as a video but as a virtual reality experience. So, I think that might be the biggest thing in the future. Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. How would you see AI in the future in teaching English? For example, AI learns from Bob's all videos and can teach us later on as Bob's alias. Thanks. So, one of the things I've been thinking about lately is how to make English lessons that are really good that would be hard for an AI to make. So, when I make an English lesson at the farmer's market, it would be really hard for an AI to make a lesson like that. Um this coming week, I did an uh English lesson about all of the garden tools that Jen and I use and I demonstrated how to use them. It would be hard for an AI to come up with the idea and to create that video. So, I'm trying to create lessons that are unique and difficult for AI to recreate. This lesson today is actually very easy in a year or two for an AI avatar to sit and teach you this but I also try to be personable and humorous which I think an AI might have trouble doing. But I think that will happen. I I think uh Henry, you're right that AI will invade the space. Um let's see. Hafia is not new but amazing invention that I appreciate the most is air conditioning as I live in a very hot climate. Is AC for houses common there? Guess heater is more common. Both. Yes, most people's houses are air conditioned and obviously everyone has heat. Um I think when I was a kid, it was less common to have air conditioning but we do have hot summers, 32, 33 degrees and so, it is nice to have air conditioning. Hey, I got a bunch of questions still but I'm going to get back to the lesson. So, please bear with me. I'll uh I'll do 10 more minutes of lesson and then I will do questions again. Let's get going on that. Video doorbell. Now, I don't have a video doorbell but people I know have video doorbells and they're pretty cool. You hit the doorbell and then they can see you and they can talk to you. Um it's kind of a cool way to find out who's at your front door. It's also nice because they can act as security cameras. So, when you have a delivery, you can see the delivery person drop the package off uh but definitely a pretty cool a thing to have video doorbell. I might get one at some point but uh when you live out in the country, not that many people come and knock on your door. You usually call before you go to someone's house when you live out in the country. Um but yes, video doorbell, very cool item. And fingerprint scanner. So, my last phone had it on the back. You would just put your finger on the back. This phone has it like right on the screen like this one does. Um fingerprint scanners are pretty cool. One of my first phones, I had to punch in a code when I wanted to use my phone and then I had to remember my code or my PIN number but a fingerprint scanner allows you to just touch your phone and it will open. It will unlock and you can use it. So, a very, very cool thing to have and then there's also, of course, facial recognition. I don't use that on my phone. Like, I don't look at my phone to unlock it but um certainly, Facial recognition is another way to do that. Um I do know my brother has security cameras on his house 
and the cameras can recognize his face. So, when he walks past his camera, he doesn't get an alert because this it just knows it's him. It can recognize his face. So, facial recognition, very, very cool. And then streaming. So, this is a pretty common one. Um this started of course with Netflix and now there's a lot of different streaming options. Um when I sit down at night, I can watch live TV like a baseball game or a basketball game or I can watch um just a regular broadcast something that's being sent through the air or through the wires um or I can watch something on a streaming service like Netflix and then it comes over the internet. So, many of you I'm sure sit down sometimes and watch something from a streaming service to help practice your English. And of course, streaming is when the TV show comes from a computer on the internet through the internet to your TV or computer or phone and then you can watch it there. I should actually define the word when I'm talking about it, right? And then there's something called crowdfunding. So, crowdfunding is when if you have an idea but you need money in order to kind of make the thing you're thinking of. Let's say you had an idea uh to make a brand new mouse trap, something to catch mice but you don't have enough money to start making it. You need to buy parts and little tools and machines. You could go on a website like Kickstarter and you could do what's called crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is when a whole bunch of people give you money in order to help you make a new invention or new product. It's very, very cool. Usually, in exchange for giving money, you get the first item as they start to make the item. You get the first one or you might get you might get other rewards as well. So, let's say let's say I wanted to write a book but I knew it would take me a year to write my book. I would need to quit my job. So, I might go to a crowdfunding website like Kickstarter and say, hey, Bob the Canadian wants to write a book but in order to write a book, he needs a certain amount of money and if you give him this amount of money, you'll get a copy of the ebook as soon as he's done writing it. I would use crowdfunding to do that. I'm not doing that by the way. I might in five years but not right now. Bluetooth speakers. These are everywhere. A Bluetooth speaker is a speaker that plays music out loud from your phone. Um these started to show up at schools a few years ago. First, we had students wearing a lot of headphones and earbuds but eventually, students started to buy Bluetooth speakers. A Bluetooth speaker has all day battery life. You can play music usually eight hours or 16 hours um and it allows people to enjoy music together. So, at school, you'll sometimes see two or three students walking and one of them will have a Bluetooth speaker clipped to their belt or they'll be carrying one and they'll be playing music and they'll all be listening to it. Pretty cool. We have a Bluetooth. We actually have this one um and Jen uses it on the farm quite a bit. Actually, sorry, my one of my kids has this one. We have a different one, I think but it's quite handy. When Jen goes out to the flower field, she can play music. VR which stands for virtual reality. Now, again, I've only tried this twice, I think. I played Beat Saber. It was pretty fun. Um I think that I'm gonna wait until the quality gets a lot better before I jump into this more um but playing VR games, virtual reality games does interest me a bit. Um I'm just not sure if it will um if I'll feel a little bit sick when I do it. You sometimes get queasy is the word we use. You might feel a little queasy when you play a VR game but virtual reality would be you put on VR a VR headset or VR goggles. I would call it a VR headset and then you see a different world around you. You see a digital world that you can interact with. So, instead of playing a video game on a screen, you you are in the game. You feel like you are in the game. Now, these were not around a number of years ago. Um they've obviously been around for more than 10 years probably um but this is relatively new. Someone figured out that if you put four propellers on a device, you can make it fly and you can make it very, very stable. I don't have a drone but Jen would love it if we bought a drone uh because its main purpose is to fly and take pictures or take video of what it sees. Um, and for the flower farm, it would be really fun to have a drone to show people what it looks like from above. But 
drones weren't around. I mean, I didn't see a drone myself until five or six years ago. A student did a project and they brought in their drone. That was the first time. Maybe a little longer than that. It was the first time that I I saw a drone. They do have a drone now. It's it's a selfie drone. So, it will fly up and then it will it'll it'll make a video while you walk around and talk. I think I'm interested in that one. I think I could make some pretty cool English lessons with that type of drone. So, again, a drone is something that flies. Um you fly it with your phone as a controller or it comes with a controller but it's also smart enough to fly itself a little bit. You know, when you're done using it, it can come back to you. You can tell it to hover in one spot. You can tell it to rotate. So, very cool way of making uh videos or taking pictures. And then, of course, there's something called an action camera. So, when digital cameras first came out, if you tried to ride your bike and make a video, the video would be very, very shaky. But eventually, a company called GoPro and there's a number of different kinds now uh came out with what's called an action camera. An action camera takes very stable footage. It takes very stable video. That means the video doesn't shake. It's designed so that even if your head is moving or if you're wearing one on your chest and you're bouncing around on your bicycle, um it creates a really nice smooth video for people to watch. If you watch the video of Brent and I zip lining, we both used GoPro action cameras to make that video uh and those cameras allowed us to uh record ourselves in a way where um the the video is very smooth. It doesn't shake at all. It was amazing. So, uh, I have ordered an action camera by the way. It's supposed to come today. I don't know how I'm going to use it yet to make English videos but I ordered a DJI action four supposed to come today. We'll see. I'll play around with it and let you know how it goes. And then, of course, the smartwatch. So, you can buy a smartwatch from Apple. There are other companies as well that make a smartwatch. A smartwatch does more than tell time, okay? A smartwatch uh knows what your heart rate is. It knows how much your heart is beating. Uh your smartwatch can count your steps. Your smartwatch can display an incoming message or buzz or make a noise when someone is phoning you on your phone. Uh so, smartwatches are very, very cool. I have never had one. A lot of my students have smartwatches now. Um I've always had a fitness tracker. I'll talk about that in a sec but a smartwatch is a very cool device. Let's just say that does way more than just tell time. Very, very cool. And there are things now called smart rings. This is just a normal ring. This is my wedding ring but you can buy smart rings now which also can uh, monitor your heart rate. Uh they can tell you how well you're sleeping at night. Um these are interesting to me but they seem a little bulky still. Like my ring is very thin and light. I don't know if this will focus on it. Um whereas a smart ring is thicker and it might Yeah, I might not like the feeling of wearing it and they're a little bit expensive now too. So, I'm gonna hold off buying a smart ring until they're cheaper and smaller and thinner and maybe they'll do more too. Hey, I'm gonna do members only questions. Let me get that set up for a second here. Uh by the way, if you are not sure what members are, members are people who have decided to click the join button below not this website. That's where the worksheets are but there's no worksheet for this lesson yet. It, it'll be coming in a day or two. Um let me turn that part off. Um members are people who have clicked the join button and who support me. So, when I say that I ordered an action camera, I receive memberships from you people. People pay and I use that money to improve the channel. Generally, I use it to buy things that help me make better English lessons. If you notice recently, in some of my videos, the camera follows me. If you watch the video that I made at the gym or if you watch the video um coming up this Tuesday, that was something I did with a gimbal. So, I'm able to buy equipment that helps me make better English lessons. So, first of all, thank you. If you are a member, you are awesome. If you wanna know more about it, click the link below and you do get something as a member. You get uh your name in green, a crown, an extra video on Wednesdays. Uh you get a lesson for the week on Mondays. A little um 
lesson plan. Lots of fun things for you to use. Anyways, I will do questions while I wait for members to start asking questions. So, this question is from Dan. Hey, Bob. Do you ever face up to doing without phone and can you figure go human life without a phone nowadays? Please stay healthy. It's hard. I would like to go away for a weekend sometime with Jen and have it be phone free but my worry is that I would want my kids to be able to contact us if something went wrong at home. So, maybe it would be like my phone. I check my phone once a day or something. I don't know. It would be hard to do. Hey, from the chat, New Words with MP has gifted one English membership to Caitlin, it looks like, got a free membership from New Words with MP. Thanks, New Words with MP for doing that. You should check out their channel, by the way, at some point. Uh, Mr. Azoz says, thanks for your answer, Bob. No problem. Hey, let me keep uh, let me keep answering questions from the forum while I wait for more members only. Lolly, lolly. Bonjour, Bob. In your opinion, is the profession of teacher in danger with AI? Merci. Not yet and I don't think it will be in my lifetime. Like, I'm 52. I'm gonna work for about 13, 14 more years and then retire. I don't think AI will change teaching that much. What I think will happen though is there's something called homeschooling. So, in Canada, you can teach your own kids at home instead of sending them to school. I think AI will start to help people with homeschooling and that will grow. So, I don't know if it will completely replace teachers but I think homeschooling will become much more common. Uh for sure. Um from Apple the Frog. Welcome back, Apple. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hope you are doing great. My question is, what do you think about the new inventions? Do you think Apple or Android are better? Thanks for your answer. So, in my house, we have both kinds of phone. I have an Android phone. I might buy an iPhone. Uh I have my work laptop is a, a MacBook Pro. At home, I use a Windows computer. I have always been neutral when it comes to choosing. I like all technology. So, which one's better? I think the iPhone might make better video. So, I might get an iPhone for that but I think the Pixel 8 from Google when it comes out might make really good video or better video. So, we will wait and see. Um from the chat. Hafia says, iPhone 15 is coming out. I remember way back when we used rotary phones on landlines. Things have come a long way, eh? And you've reached 1.6 million subs. Woohoo. Yeah, thanks. I it's uh summer's over and I've hit 1.6 million subs. I honestly, I don't keep track. I, to me, the most important thing is having a good idea for the next English lesson, not the number of subscribers. Key Park. Hi, Bob. Do you allow your students to use chat GPT to do their homework like writing or something? I don't. In fact, we are starting to change how students do writing so that we can prevent them from using it. So, right now, my students are writing a play in French class. They write it in class and they sit in a way where I can walk around and see their screens to make sure they're not just using chat GPT. Wanda. So, but we might let students use it. Like, it is a tool, right? So, there might be situations where they learn to use it well. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. Today, there are softwares that confirm the authenticity of master or doctor degree work. I mean, if the student did not copy part of it, what do you think? I hope AI, as it allows people to cheat, I I hope AI also becomes smart at recognizing when people are cheating. So, I hope when a student uses chat GPT, the teacher can use like a teacher AI to figure out if the student used AI. I think that will be really cool. Freddie Wolf, Bob, when you see everything that has been invented in the medical and scientific field, it's just crazy and astonishing that we can do what we can do to save people. It is. In fact, my doctor once said, he said, for someone my age, I'm in my early 50s, he just said, if you eat right. Like, if you eat healthy food and you exercise, if you can get to age 60 or 70 and be really, really healthy, the medical technology will be so amazing, you'll probably live to be a hundred because things are changing so quickly. You know, surgery on the heart used to be and still is where they open a person here but they can do it from the side. They can do it 
in a way that's minimally invasive with robots which means people heal faster. So, yes, I think it's pretty cool. Thanks for your answer, Bob from Lolly Lolly. No problem. Freddie Wolf. Salut, Bob. Yes, drones are widely used in agriculture to monitor the quality of crops or the drought of the land and so much more. Yeah, and we've started seeing them here. Um, we call it crop scouting, what you're talking about, but also they might start using them to apply herbicides. They might use drones to spray crops. Now, I know some of you are organic and that's frightening, but um, that is going to be another use of them. Natalia Illusion. Hi, has anything new appeared in your libraries? We have automatic receivers of books that we have read without people. No, the only thing I would say is like Jen has a library card but mostly she checks out books using her phone and reads them on her phone. She doesn't actually go to the library very often anymore. So, that would be the biggest change there. Uh from Key Park. Thank you and if you need to charge a new car now, do you like to choose an EVS? So, right now, if I buy another vehicle, it will probably still be gas. If I do buy an electric, we have a spot in our shed where it's already wired for the kind of power you need. Like, in Canada, we use 120 volts but in my 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 shed, I have 240 volt so I can charge a car there. So, that's probably where I will go. Ranildo says, God bless you and everyone. Thank you very much for that. Um let me go back to questions. From To Fung, do you know any specific Canadian invention that is helpful for people to go out when it heavily snows? No, although I think self-driving cars are making it safer to drive in the snow. I know that snow tires are required in some parts of Canada. Snow tires are made of a softer material so they grip better. I know anti-lock brakes have made it safer to drive in the snow because the car can stop better. So, I think those things. So, I said no and then I listed a bunch of things. Yes, there are definitely things that have made it safer. Uh Amran. Hi, Bob. What is your personal best invention? Definitely the smartphone. Yes, I would I would say the smartphone is the coolest. Uh from Peter. Hello, Mr. Wiseman. I'm very happy to see you today. Hi, Peter. I don't have a question but your topic is very wonderful. Have a nice day. Thank you. I will try my best to have a nice day. Um let's see. From Michael. Good morning, Bob. Do you or your neighbors use RTK real-time kinematic and section control on your fields? Thank you and have a great weekend. Yes. So, pretty much every piece of equipment that comes into my field has uh basically GPS or RTK GPS, ultra precise GPS. So, if you're not familiar, there's GPS which is accurate down to I don't know five to thirty inches and then there's RTK which is sub inch accurate. So, when my neighbor plants my field, he's using an RTK system and it's it's highly accurate. When they spray the field, it's highly accurate um uh, GPS for sure. Um Renildo in the chat says, I love this channel. Thank you. Madi says, thank goodness we don't have snow. No need to change car tires. Yep. It's almost that time here. It's almost time for us to change our tires. Um let's see here. Um from Bingo. Fire Department Chronicle says electric car fires are an absolute nightmare. Taking up to 30 days submerged in water before they can be put out. What's your hot take? My hot take is <laughs> hot take by the way is like what's your quick opinion? My hot take is I was talking to a student about this and they said you know there's a there's a lot of problems with electric cars and my response is this. We are in a transition. We are in a 10 to 50 year transition and along the way there will be problems and people will figure out how to solve those problems. So, yes, I think storing an enormous amount of energy in a battery in a car does cause some concerns but I think we will figure out how to solve them at some point. But I'm not familiar with that one but I'm sure that there is some concerns about I mean, it's a it's a lot of energy in one spot, right? Uh let's see here. I'm going back to members only or normal chat. Let me finish off members. Let's see. Natalia says, thank you. Accessing books in libraries via the internet is also a new invention. Yeah, and it's really cool. Like it let's say it's the middle of winter and it's really snowy and you don't have anything to do. You can just get a book on your phone from the library. Pretty handy. Uh hey, let me have a sip of water and we will finish off 
this lesson. Uh, here we go. Fitness tracker. So, I wear a fitness tracker. It counts my steps. It has built-in GPS. If I go for a walk, it it memorizes my route. Like, when I get back, I can see on a map where I walk. It tells me how fast I walked, how fast it took me or how long it took me to walk one kilometer. So, many, many people wear fitness trackers. Probably one of the most common ones would be a Fitbit uh, or an Apple Watch acts as a fitness tracker as well. Um, next day delivery or same day delivery. When I was a kid, if you ordered something, it took six or seven days for it to arrive. Now, if I order something in the morning, sometimes it comes the same day and if it doesn't come the same day, it comes the next day. So, next day delivery or same day delivery is a relatively new thing. Um honestly, when I was in my 20s even, if I wanted a book from France, it took a week or two for the book to arrive. Now, if I want a book from a French author, I have it on my Kindle like within 10 seconds. So, it's it's cool. Um but yes, even if uh let's see, we ordered a timer the other day like a kitchen timer and I ordered it at 10 in the morning and it came at four o'clock in the afternoon and I live out in the country. So, next day delivery, became very common over the last five years and now same day delivery is becoming quite common. Very, very cool. So, we do not have a robot to mow our lawn. We do not have a robot to vacuum our house but they are becoming more common. People will buy a robot. A robot is a machine that does the job of a human. A machine that's able to think a little bit. Not really. What would be a better way to describe it? A machine that has some logic and programming to do a job or task. Someday, I think my lawn will be mowed by a robot. I think that's just going to be how it works. Someday, my house will probably be mowed or not mowed. My house will be vacuumed by a robot. So, again, robots are becoming more common. Um robots that look like humans I think are still very far away but robots like this or in factories, most of our cars are made by robots working on assembly lines. Uh earbuds. So, when I was younger, you had headphones, okay? And there was a wire and then eventually, we had earbuds with a wire and now we have earbuds or AirPods if you're buying them from Apple um where they just go in your ear and there's no wire. See, I still have the old kind, right? With the wire. (laughs) <laughs> but definitely, this is becoming more common. Uh most students have these. Most teenagers have these now. They don't have the old kind with the wire. This is very, very common. Foldable phones. So, I don't know what I think about these but there are a couple foldable phones now on the market. Maybe three where instead of just a normal phone which is this size, you can open the phone up it's a folding phone or a foldable phone and I think we're going to go with the word foldable in English. I bet you someone at some point, one of the manufacturers will just say this is called a foldable but we'll see but for now, people are referring to them as folding phones or foldable phones um and they're pretty cool. Um I would be worried though that eventually it would break But a foldable phone is of course a phone that you can open and close and I think it has a screen on the outside as well. A gimbal. Where is my gimbal? Oh, it's right here. So, yeah, I bought a gimbal. Um I was gonna show you how it worked but I'm not quite ready to do that. Um a gimbal is a device that makes a camera or phone move very, very smoothly. If I try to hold my phone to make a video, I'm a pretty shaky person but if I use my gimbal, here, let me see if I can get this hooked up live while we're watching, while I'm making a video. Um if I use my gimbal, it will stabilize it for me. See if I can, yeah, sorry, I don't have it in the screen but you can see as I move this, I can flip it too, I think, yeah. It keeps the phone relatively level. (laughs) I'm demonstrating this live. Um and as I move, the phone itself doesn't move. So, it's a very cool new thing. 
Um, again, I used this to make the lesson at the gym and I used this yesterday uh, to make a lesson um, in the garden. Let's learn English in the garden. It's gonna be called but a gimbal has three axes and it's used to stabilize. So, when you make a video, it's very, very smooth. Instead of me, you know, going outside with my camera and it's shaking a lot, the gimbal um makes it much smoother. So, thanks members for helping me buy things like that to make better English lessons. We talked about this a little bit. You can now read on a device or on your phone. You can read an ebook. So, instead of buying a paper book, you can read an ebook and then LED light bulbs. So, this is how we say it LED. We say each letter. You know, we used to have incandescent bulbs and uh, those used a lot more electricity. LED bulbs use far less electricity. I wonder if we can see on this package. So, these use far less energy. So, they use they use if you used an incandescent bulb, it would use 60 watts and I think it says it only uses 6.5 watts. I can't quite see. Uh, it's a little blurry for me. Maybe you can see it. it might say 9.5. Sorry, the picture's blurry. Um but LED light bulbs have helped us save money on electricity but the last article I read said the world's a brighter place now because of LED bulbs. So, now we can make it brighter or light out at night for less money. So, now we're using more light bulbs to make it brighter at night. So, I'm not sure if it's backfiring but certainly LED bulbs have made the world a brighter place at night. Touch screen. So, I almost forgot this one but I mean if you have an iPad or a smartphone uh in even some computers, some laptops, you can touch the screen. Like you don't have to use just the mouse or the keyboard anymore. You can just touch the screen to do things. Um so, I don't have a touch screen on my computer uh but I do have a tablet and it's a touch screen obviously and my phone, all of us use phones. When you use a phone, you just use your finger to use the phone. So, touch screens. Even my camera has a touch screen. Um what else? Um trying to think. My my other camera has a touch screen. Like it's just very common now. In fact, my son has a camera and it doesn't have a touch screen and it seems weird that you can't just touch the screen to do stuff. So, very cool, cool invention. And then payment systems. So, obviously, years ago, you just needed money, right? Like you needed to get out your wallet and you needed to have oh, there is actually money in my wallet. That's that's strange. Um but now, you just use cards or you use your 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 watch or you use your phone. I mean, there are so many ways to pay now. Um at school, sometimes I forget my lunch and I can buy lunch at school. If I don't have money, I can just pay with my I can pay with my Fitbit. I can pay with my phone. I can pay with my bank card. Um there are many, many different payment systems for me to use. And then there's something called crypto currency. This is something I don't know a lot about but this is money in a digital form. So, they use something called the blockchain to memorize and record all transactions that are done between people who own Bitcoin or one of the other cryptocurrencies. It's a new way of exchanging money but it's kind of a unique thing right now. Like, in Canada, you can't really buy things with Bitcoin at a store. We do have some like Bitcoin cash machines where you can buy Bitcoin and there are some businesses where you can use cryptocurrency to buy stuff but the average person doesn't know how to do it, okay? So, it's it's so new that not everyone knows how to do it. Well, that's the end of the regular lesson. So, thanks for watching that. I am gonna take 10 minutes to finish up the questions right now. So, you don't need to leave if you don't want to. Um but uh I'm gonna have a sip of water first. Manu says, hi, teacher Bob. Are EVs more resilient than other vehicles in terms of use? So, one thing you have to realize is the electric motor is an amazing invention and has almost been perfected. So, Jen and I have a water pump. So, it's an electric motor and that water pump is 50 years old and it still runs like it's brand new. 
Um, we have a fan in the barn that is 35 years old and it still runs like it's brand new. The electric motor lasts a very very long time if it's built correctly and I think one of the things if you compare an electric motor to a gas engine an electric motor is just is just gonna last longer. So, that's one of the things that I think with electric vehicles or EVs that is an advantage is plus there's other benefits as well. When they get in an accident though and the battery gets damaged that battery is very expensive to replace. That's all I know about that's all I know about EVs. Gustavo, the next wonderful invention will be the flying car, right? So, the same technology they use for drones is what they are using to explore creating flying cars because I think let's say you have a flying car with six propellers but it's designed so if one or two fail it can still get to ground to the ground safely. I think that will make it more popular. Uh let's see. Winter Wright. Hi, teacher Bob. What kind of thing do you want to have as a new invention? For me, I want to have a subject to remind me to calm down if I have negative feelings. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't know. I was thinking of something the other day that would be nice but I can't remember what it was. Usually, my ideas are just how to make a current invention better. I usually don't have original ideas. Colton. Hi, Bob. Do you use AI in your work? In your opinion, what advantages of AI can help us to do work better? I don't use it in my work. I don't know how to use it well yet in my work. I will say I've used AI to generate images but I haven't used something like chat GPT a lot. In fact, in my computer class, we do a bit of graphic design and we actually use a little bit of AI to design images as well as learning how to do it uh the normal way, I guess. From Sophia, hello, dear teacher Bob. I've been using chat GPT to help me with translation of my own narratives. What do you think about it? I think every tool is amazing but you shouldn't only use that tool. So, here's what I mean. If you needed to do some writing, you could write it in your own language and have Google Translate translate it for you. Okay, you didn't really do any work. You could write it in your own language and have chat GPT translate it for you. Okay, you didn't really do any work but in both situations, you might have learned some new vocabulary or you might see how you should put sentences together. So, here's what I would do. If you needed to write a description of what you did today and you want to use chat GPT or a translation tool. Use it. Read what it gives you and then without looking at it a little while later, try to write it on your own, okay? So, I would say you still have to do that step of doing it on your own but I don't think it's wrong to use the tool to help you a bit to get started. Wolfram, hi, Bob. I hope things are going well there. Aren't you worried that AI could do bad things like in the movie Terminator with Army, Arnie, sorry, Arnold Schwarzenegger? A bit. I don't think we're that far yet and hopefully, the world can come to some agreements on how to use it well. From New Words with MP, as teachers, what will the challenges in teaching in an era where students who have access to many educational resources? So, I think the strategy will be to make sure students are creating original content as well as learning to use the other tools but also in a I think classrooms will become more important. Places where teachers can walk and observe students making things um because I think it's too easy if if you assign work and don't look at their screen, I think it's too easy to cheat or use other resources right now. Freddie, the French cousin. Hi, Bob. No question today. I think after fire, the most important invention was electricity because what would all of our greatest inventions be without electricity? I would agree. The wheel, fire. Yeah, there's some pretty basic inventions that have changed the world fundamentally, I would say. Uh let's see. From sign. Hi, I have a question for you. I've invented my new phone. Also, can you please paraphrase, paraphrase, invent the new phone? Um, So, we wouldn't say I have invented my new phone. We would probably say like I'm buying a new phone. I got a new phone. I'm learning to use my new phone. Um I've become quite good at using my new phone. I'm trying to think of all the phrases that we would use to talk about a new phone. Um because 
unless you are someone who actually makes phones, you wouldn't use the word invent. From Justin, hi teacher Bob, you showed us a lot of digital device inventions and I think a new inventions about energy series might be more motivating for the world in the future. Yeah, that's true. There, I did kind of stick with a lot of the technology type stuff, right? Like smart rings, fitness trackers, earbuds, video doorbells, all Bluetooth speakers. Very, it's a very technological lesson. So, maybe I should do another lesson and broaden this just a little bit. Uh let's see here. I'm gonna skip the next one because it's not on topic. Next one is not on topic. From Hobart, teacher, what the most amazing invention do you think? I think it's the phone. I think it's the phone. Yes. But, you know, fire is pretty good too and the wheel. I have to re- I have to rethink this now. Like, um having bathrooms inside the house. That's nice instead of an outhouse. There's a lot of pretty cool inventions out there. Uh okay, I do have a minute. Let me go back uh and do the two that I skipped. Rita says, hello, Bob. My first time here. I'm from Algeria. Which different, what's the difference between Australian English and Canadian English? The accent mostly and some vocabulary. Canadian English and American English is very similar. Australian English has a very different, slightly different accent. Not very different, slightly different uh, and some words would be different as well. From Lotus, hi, hello, lovely teacher. I have a question. How to learn the 12 tenses of English so easily? Thank you for the answer and have a nice day. Conversation. Conversation where you have to talk about, listen closely, what you're currently doing, what you're gonna do tomorrow, what you did yesterday, what you would have done when you're younger, what you might do in the future. Like you have to have conversations where you're talking about different things in time, tomorrow, yesterday, today and different possibilities. Things you might have done, you could have done, you would have done. You have to have conversations where you intentionally use all of those tenses and they will start to become natural for you but that's key. Um okay, I do wanna mention that um currently on the day, if you're watching this live or the day after, there's no study pack for this but there will be a study pack at bobthecanadian.com and there will eventually be a link in the description below to a study pack for this lesson. Again, the study pack will have uh the original slides as a PDF and PowerPoint um and a bunch of worksheets, eight or nine worksheets to help you practice all of the vocabulary that I just taught. So, again, it's not there yet. I didn't have time this week but it will be there by tomorrow or the next day. Um and then I will also put a link in the description below once it's available. So, check for that if that's something that's interesting to you. Uh if you're a independent English learner, very, very helpful. Um and if you are an English teacher, very helpful for your classroom. Now, there are a whole bunch of study packs there now for other lessons. So, you can go and have a look. Um bobthecanadian.com is where you go. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. You guys are awesome. Uh, I do wanna remind you this lesson will come out in a shorter format in a couple of days. Remember, repetition is a great way to remember. So, please either watch or listen to that lesson. Um I remove all of the questions and it becomes just a pure lesson with all I think there were 32 words and phrases today. So, it's just the lesson itself. It's usually about 20 to 30 minutes long. This one will probably be about 25 minutes. Do watch it at least once more if not twice more to help you remember the words and thanks for being here. Thanks to all my members for helping support the channel for helping me buy things like gimbals and action cameras. Uh and I'm gonna say bye now. Bye to Madi and Vitor, Lolly Lolly, Kakachen, uh Huawei, Kate, Smile, Ulia, Hafiez, Freddie Wolf, Natalia Illusion, Apple the Frog, Paco San, uh Tri Kiet Luang, uh Ralph and Unsel and Vitor. <laughs> Vitor's giving me a warning. Testing it, testing to make sure. If you use warn instead of warning Vitor, it will do the whole name. Um well, it will do up to four words I think. Bye to Sam. Sam says, thanks Bob for providing a very practical lesson. All these new things are existing in real life and they are helpful to make our life more convenient. Yes. Well, they let us do this, right? This is a cool way to use the new technology. Unsel says, thank you so much, dear teacher Bob. No problem. Bye to Ederson and everyone else. Bye to Bia Seattle and Sophia. I'm gonna wrap this up, everyone. Thanks for watching. 
have a great day. I'm gonna go to work now and uh teach some more. I I have a little bit of time. I have about an hour before I need to be there but uh should be a fun day. Have a great weekend.